Hello fellow creative spirits. I'm going to start off with a full list of materials. So first, what you're going to need is a porcelain tile, and this is a good surface for you to work on, but it also allows you to bake it in the oven. The next thing you're going to need is aluminum foil and your clay. I use Super Sculpey Living Doll and Baby. You're also going to need an acrylic roller and a variety of different tools. So one that I really like is the X-Acto knife. And also I have the Super Sculpey 5-Way tool and this has a variety of different textures that you can create with the, the tips that they provide. And if you don't have access to the 5-Way tool, you can use household items such as pencil tips, you can use bobby pins. You're also going to need sandpaper, so what I use is 220 grit sandpaper. And for safety reasons, you also want to be using a mask and some gloves. You're also going to want to use an oven and also have access to a well-ventilated space for when you are doing the sanding. You are also going to need paint to paint the polymer clay sculpture. So the paints that I am going to be using are Soho Urban Artist Acrylic Paints. You can also use this matte fluid medium and that helps to make the color go on in glazes and this helps to disperse the color evenly. I also like to use different paint brushes. I like these smaller liner brushes to get the really tiny crevices as well as some bigger brushes and I will put the exact sizes in the description. You'll also need a palette and a water cup to wash your brushes in as you're working. And this is optional, but I like to have kind of realistic lashes on my sculpture. So I use these cheap falsies that I found and also super glue to apply the falsies with. And also optional, people ask me how I get that very shiny look on the eyes and sometimes the lips and what I use is resin so it's a two-part epoxy resin called art resin and if you use this stuff you definitely want to make sure that you use it in a ventilated area and finally you are definitely going to want a lot of references i actually just put them all onto a pinterest board and made a compilation of different angles so once we have all of the materials gathered we can officially start the sculpting so here on my porcelain tile, I have a template which I made of Tyler facing completely forward and we're going to take the aluminum foil now. You want to make sure that the picture is as forward facing as possible as symmetrical so that you can get the most accurate details. So here I am making the skeleton using the aluminum foil. You're going to want to get it to fit inside of the template. Now here we're going to be warming up the clay. When you warm up the clay it makes it more pliable and then we're going to roll it out using our acrylic roller. You want to make like a flat sheet that will be able to cover the entire surface of the aluminum foil and gently lay that over top of that and you're going to use a sharp object to cut away the excess. Now we're going to make another sheet, once again, warming the clay and then laying over top of the, of the clay already and smoothing it out, cutting off the excess. Now something that I forgot to do was to uh, get rid of the bubbles, so we're just going to poke the bubble out and then smooth it. We're making, again, another layer. The, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating lots and lots of layers as you're going to notice by using these sheets and this time so that I avoid making bubbles I gently smoothed it from the top down uh, gently smoothing out any bubbles as I go. So now I realized that it needed some uh, chin bulk so I'm adding the chin. Now something that you're going to keep in mind when you are making this sculpt you are going to be looking at your references non-stop. So I actually have a whole Pinterest board full of all different types of angles of Tyler's face so that I can uh, look at it from different angles. Uh, when you're first starting out it's a little bit difficult to really see what's missing because so much of it is missing so we're just trying to get the basic uh, bulk of the face. Something interesting about human faces is that the center towards the nose and where the forehead 
and the lip area is protrudes a lot more than the sides so we're going to be building up the bulk of the center part of the face um, where the nose is and as a little tip what I did to make the center of the face protrude out more without having to use more clay is I just got a piece of aluminum foil that I shaped into a little oval disc and then put it under so that the center part would protrude even more. Now here what I'm doing, I'm making guidelines. So by very carefully looking at the template, you're going to mark off where the ends of the eyes are, the top of the eye, the bottom of the eye, the sides of the nose, the mouth. Uh, something that really helped me get better at this was to do a lot of live drawing where I kind of have to um, get things proportional and symmetrical. Then we're going to poke the eye sockets so where the eyeball will actually go I am just making a circle to be able to place the eyeball inside of uh, using the guidelines as a reference for how big to make the hole. And then you roll up a little ball and you put it in there and you're just going to want to make sure that it's not too big or too small and it might be a little hard to to guess exactly at first but it's okay because we can move it around a little just try to get it as fitted to the eye socket as possible and then here I'm realizing it needs more forehead so I'm adding bulk there and smoothing it out again there is a lot of information that is still missing for you to be able to do 100% accurate quite yet, but you are using your guidelines to kind of guide you, as well as your reference pictures. Now I'm making the nose holes, the nostrils. In this part with the pencil, I am just sculpting out this part of the face called the supraorbital foramen, which is kind of that nasal bone. And then also looking at profile views of the reference pictures so you can accurately create a nose from the side view. Now you're going to be making the lip, so you're going to get a slice of clay and you're going to try to fit that where the lip area is and just cutting away some of the parts that you won't need and also making the lip line accurate to where the lip line is in the reference pictures. You want to make sure that the lips are where they need to be and they're evenly spaced from the nose. And then using tools to kind of smooth it around and start to take the shape of the lip using those tools to kind of like work upwards to create that lip. Now we are going to be making the eyelids. So for the eyelids, once again, I have rolled up sheets of clay to guide to create these eyelids. So I am looking at my reference picture a lot when I'm doing this because everybody's eyelid is different. Some people have more lid and um, other people have less lid. Some people have more hooded eyes. As in this case, there is some hooded eyes. Um, so I'm making the, the eye lid itself very thin and then taking off the excess and then creating the hood with another sheet of clay and then smoothing that inwards. So here I am putting in more bulk of cheek because I realized that it was missing cheek and then we are repeating to the other side with the eyelid. You want to pay close attention to the angles of the eyelid where the inner corners are located, where the outer corners are located and everyone has a distinct shape to their eyelids. Some people have more almond shaped eyelids some people have an angle to their eyelids, so you just want to be mindful of that as you work. I'm adding bulk to the lip because I realize the lips protrude a little bit out more, so here I'm just cutting away the excess that I don't need from the lips. Once again, here I am adding more to the brow bone. Um, I realized when I was looking at the profile view that the brow bone protrudes outwards as well as the cheek here I realized that the cheek needed more bulk so once again when it comes to doing this it takes a lot of um, micro adjustments and sometimes you might have to work on top of something that you already did uh, but that's okay that's what makes it kind of therapeutic and fun here I'm just taking the shape of the nose 
and looking at exactly where those nostrils are as well as any other angular lines from the from the nose as well as the eye there is the lower eyelid that also has a part that protrudes inwards which would be like where the socket is I'm adding some more bulk to the lips and giving them shape once again and then using a tool to kind of open up those lips and create teeth. Here for the nostrils, I realized that I was missing some skin on the bottom part of the nostril, so I decided to go in and add a small little amount of clay there. Here in the chin, I'm just adding some more clay. Once again, looking um, at the side view and kind of telling what is missing there, taking the shapes. I'm using this tool to create lip lines because there's textures in our lips and very gently just adding those little by little. And when I am nearing the finish line, I realize that the right side of the face was missing some, it, it looked a little bit lopsided, one side had more clay, so I added that, as well as the forehead was not protruding out as much as it should have, so I adjusted that and began to smooth that out. So I decided that I wasn't gonna do the eyes as I originally had intended, so I put the eyes back. That's why I didn't really explain what I did with the eyes. I will give you a tutorial on how I did that other one, but for this one in particular, I wanted to just do the plain eye. And then you take rubbing alcohol and you clean the surface from fingerprints using rubbing alcohol. This helps to uh, get rid of lint because it slightly melts polymer clay, it gets rid of fingerprints. And then towards the end, I keep looking and seeing, okay, the forehead needs some more bulk, so I'm adding additional clay. As you can tell, it takes a lot of layers. Then you take it to the oven to bake. Uh, this clay in particular is, uh, you bake it at 275 degrees for 15 minutes per fourth inch since this was at its deepest point one and a half inches thick then I put it in the oven for one and a half hours and you can use your exacto knife to cut away any additional clay that might have baked where you didn't want it to now you take it outside and we're ready to sand it so what I'm using is 220 grit paper a mask and some gloves so you are going to put on your mask and gloves and you're just going to sand it in circular motions. Once you start sanding it, you'll see how it is somewhat uneven. Uh, no matter how hard you try, it's really hard to not get it uneven. So the sandpaper really evens things out and makes it look very silky smooth. And you want to work into the small crevices as well, being gentle so that you don't break anything. Although I'd say this polymer clay is pretty durable, you just don't want anything to break. Then you clean it off and and then you can use a piece of denim to buff it out and make it shiny again. The next step is to do the painting. So for the painting, I'm using Soho Urban Acrylics. The colors that I'm using for this beautiful darker skin tone is Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna, Azo Vermilion, White, and Cobalt Blue. Now for the exciting part, where you actually start the painting process. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to make a base coat using the burnt umber and some red and some of the yellow hue and I'm creating this tone and just trying to cover as much of the skin as possible with it. Now this gives that like blank canvas fear because you're like oh my gosh it looks so messy but you just gotta know that you just have to keep working it in. Um, also the matte medium really helped to smooth out the colors. I realized when I was trying to use just the paint, it just was not coming on to the surface and adhering quite right. Now here, what you want to think about is working um, towards the back forward, so the teeth and the eyes you're going to want to fill in now so that when you paint the, the, the brown on top, it's easier to do as opposed to trying to paint the teeth after you already 
have um, laid down the brown paint. So here what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding more skin color and paying close attention to the reference image and what colors are being used in the reference. So in the reference there's the skin has some reddish tones as well as some yellow tones and a hint of blue even like a purpley color in some parts. So now here I'm just adjusting the lips. There are some highlights in the lips that are more pink and there's some parts that are a little more red which is more towards the the gum. It would be the gum line would be more red. So I'm using that light highlight color which is like a, a purplish pinkish color. And then there are some parts where you really want to highlight. So on top of the lip, for example, I saw that it had a lot more highlight around there. There was a highlight along the bridge of the nose. So I'm mixing a color that um, matches as closely po as possible to the reference image that I'm looking at. And then the highlight on the nose. This is where knowing how to paint normally is really useful because you can kind of um, use those same techniques that you would use to paint portraiture and then just bring it to a three-dimensional surface. So there are some highlights on the inner corner of the eye, underneath the eye, and then there are some shadows which we're going to be building within like the crease of the eye. Here I'm starting to map out where the pupils would be and just paying very close attention to the pupils. And then going back and I, um, as the paint dries, it dries a little bit darker, so then I have to keep coming in and adjusting and layering and using that matte medium to really spread that color and blend it very well. Now you're going to make guidelines for where the eyebrows are, so I like to look at the picture. Where does the eyebrow start? Where does it end? How high does it go? And you're just going to map it out and use a very fine brush to make little wispy uh, hairs and then uh, vary in different tones as well because uh, in some parts your eyebrow is going to be more dense. I'm going to be doing the same kind of technique just kind of randomly stippling onto the lip to make some facial hair and then using a brush to blend it out. Now here I'm going to use a little bit of a trick um, because I did realize I made the eye a little bit too wide so I am just going to make a faux eye water line and to, to bring it and make it look smaller and more accurate and then again using the reference picture to figure out where the eye is and adding some highlights. And we're going to repeat the eyebrow to the other side. Now we're going to give a highlight on the lip because the lip is very reflective. It's going to reflect a little bit of light as well as on the chin. We are just continuing to build up the layers. The more layers that you use, the more true to life that it will look. Because our own skin is very translucent and has a lot of layers, so we're trying to emulate that look. Using a bigger brush, we want to work in the highlights in the forehead area. And we're just very lightly just brushing it outwards. Here I uh, made the eyebrows come in a little bit too close, so I'm just using that highlight color there to kind of blend it outwards. Here I am taking the darker color and I am intensifying some of the reds there, so adding a glaze of red. And then here I am going to change the, eye the eyes because I want, for this particular piece, I want the final piece to be of a certain look so it's going to be kind of like cyberpunk future-esque. So what I'm planning on doing now is I'm going to just add those signature touches. If you follow me on Instagram, you know a lot of my pieces lately have had kind of like these like um, hollowed out almost eyes or like a very like dreamy eye. So I'm just adding those touches. Now we're taking those falsies and we're going to cut them down to size. So we are just trimming those and then applying with a super glue. And then we are going to mix the resin. It's a two-part epoxy, so you really want to mix that very well so that it hardens. And you're going to apply it to the eyeball.
and then you're going to cover it with a box of some sort so that no dust will get on it while the resin is drying and it'll be dry completely in 24 hours. So that is my tutorial on how I made this face. Stay tuned for the entire finished piece. Thank you guys so much for your input on my last video. Let me know if you guys have any additional questions in the comments. I'm going to put as much information from the video as possible in the description. And if you guys like this, be sure to follow me on Instagram at shoemakerart. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!